Shalom. I'm John Carney Roth, and this is Anthony Hill, and you are watching Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions. So we're back again this week, Anthony, and uh, we left off on the last one, the letter of the law, how far do you go before uh, it kills you, I think it was, something like that. And uh, that was a very strong discussion because we came up with some really, really tough uh, scriptures. And you know how I know that? Mm. I know it by the amount of angry people. <laughs> Fortunately, the predominant was most of the people gave thumbs up and approved it, which was a good sign. I was very happy to see that. But there were some that got quite angry, but they didn't say why they were angry. And uh, I thought about that a little bit, you know, and I thought to myself, well, you know, if, if you're angry, I, I, I want to talk for a minute, just, just for a minute, because this is going to be a long one today. You better get yourself a bag of potato chips, get yourself a soda or a beer, whatever it is you like, and find a comfor comfortable place on the, on the couch uh, or wherever you happen to be and sit back because this is going to be a long one, but we got some dynamite coming up in these scriptures. But I want to go back just for a minute, and I want to talk to those out there that are angry. And what I like you to do is take that energy of that anger when you saw this video and channel it to yourself and ask yourself, why am I angry? Why am I angry? And I think what you're going to find is the reason why you're angry is because it comes from a place of insecurity. And what I mean is, and I'm not saying this to degrade anybody, I just, this, these discussions that we're doing is all about bringing out the deeper self yeah. at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that this, um, this thing that I'm talking about is about insecurity. What it really says is that what the word of Yahweh that came forth in that video disturbed the minds and beliefs of the people that got angry when they watched it. And if it got you angry, instead of focusing on the anger, if it got you angry, why don't you take a look at why did it make you angry? And it's because, like anything in this life, when somebody comes to you and they tell you something that you're doing wrong, and you know you're doing wrong, but you in no way, shape, or form want to change what you're doing that's wrong, what do you do? The natural carnal nature, which as a believer you're not supposed to indulge in, is going to come out and it's going to blast the other person for how dare you try to tell me such a thing. Yes. That's where the rubble meets the road. And if you refuse to look at yourself and ask yourself the question, why am I angry about this message? Then you're a hypocrite. And I'm not trying to condemn anybody. That's not my point. We are trying to get real here. These, this discussions that we're doing is only for those people who are trying to get real. The ones that don't want to get real, there ain't nothing much we can do for you. When your time comes, you'll deal with it. But as we go through this discussions today, I think what they're going to find is that even though it's for the present, the, these discussions and what's going to come out of it for today is going to prepare you for what's coming later. And if you can't get it under control now, you're not going to get it under control later. Or at least it's not going to be so easy. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the last video, I talked about how this world system through the Shabbatai Franks is trying to dismantle everybody's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And they're going to guide them into believing something else. And so we kind of concluded with, you, look, in this life, you're going to be under somebody's law. You can't go through this life and not be under somebody's law. So you're either going to be under Yahweh's law or you're going to be under man's system of law. And we're all going to have to make a decision as to which one it is we're going to keep. Because as we know from Scripture, you're not going to be able to be in the middle ground. You're going to have to make a decision. So the whole point of this, these, these teachings and stuff is for edification, to help you to stop and think, why am I doing what I'm doing? I didn't see myself in these scriptures before like this. 
So anyway, I didn't want to belabor that too long, but I kind of had a little time to meditate and look at people's responses. And like I said, overall, most people were very um, generous in their responses to this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the second phase and we're going to kind of stay on the same uh, vein of the law, but we're going to kind of start to come at it from a little bit more of a different angle here today. And so today's discussion is, has the Talmud crushed your testicles? <laughs> has the Talmud crushed your testicles? I know some are out there saying, oh, he's going porno on me or something like that. No, actually, I'm not. You know, that we're not, we don't go in those, those realms. But um, the Talmud plays a very important role, not only in the New Testament time when Yahshua and the disciples had to contend with the rabbis of their day and, and, and the elders and so forth, but um, also it plays a big role today because history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. And I've been watching, I've been teaching on this over the last several years. And it seems like a lot of people have a rough time trying to understand this concept. But Yahweh, a couple of years ago, gave me this title, Has Talmud Crushed Your Testicles? And he gave me a glimpse into the spirit realm as to what spiritually happens to us mm -hmm. when we allow ourselves to be seduced away into a different gospel, or at least a, another gospel message that infuses itself with the one that you received when you received Yahshua. And now it's supposedly more complete, but what it does is it crushes your testicles. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into what we mean by this because this is actually in scripture now. So if you're mad that I put this title up there, you really got to go argue with Yahweh because he's the one that put it in the scriptures and we're going to bring it out. So, uh, so with that being said, Let's go ahead and start with some opening comments. I kind of already did mine. I don't think I'll do another one, but I'm going to give you a chance uh, to go through this a little bit and give your thoughts on it. Uh, praise Yahweh. Um, this one here, <laughs> I, we don't strip this. You no, know, no uh, we don't. We sit down and we talk, and all of a sudden you'll say, I just got a word. He just gave me this, you know. And I say, well, then that's the next discussion. How are we going to bring it back? And yeah, when, you, that's the when, trick you, sometimes. when you came and, and gave me the title, and I'm like, ah, that's going to be rough, John. <laughs> and, and, and I say, we can't talk from a physical no. perspective. No. It's got to be spiritual. Right. And right away he started talking about using the word testicles. Uh, the testicles of your mind. See, if they touch us physically, we'll feel it down oh, there. Oh, yeah. But yeah. when things begin to penetrate your mind and touch your mind to drive it, it begins to crush it, you know, out of your heart. It begins to penetrate so little until you don't feel the little touches that evil are, uh, just say, misinformation enters in, you know, and begin to work its defiling um, process within you. But physically, if somebody touch you somewhere that's sensitive, you feel it right away. And while we minimize our minds and our hearts from the sensitivity that they possess, I can't understand it, but we started out our first discussion on a journey, you mm -hmm. know, and our life experiences, and these are all places where we've been. Uh, uh, not so much as in the Word, but before you came in the Word, you had a different view of mm -hmm. how things were. Right. And then you come over into the Word, and you still have a different view on how things are supposed to be. And for me, the, the best comparison I can, I can um, use is when Yeshua came and called Peter and all of those off the ship, they had to make a decision to leave off of a place of comfortness, mm -hmm. huh? A, a, a place where they had, all they knew was everything I own is wrapped up into this. This is my life, it consists of this. And, and my life doesn't consist in the abundance of what I have or what I can be. It's more to it than this. It, it, 
I, I, I perceive they might have been saying, it's more to it than this fishing life, lifestyle for me. And I need to follow him in order to get it. And so that's what we're doing. We're following him all the way from one lifestyle to another lifestyle. And hopefully he will help us, with the help of him, draw people. If you, if you can understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He's pulling us with one hand <laughs> and blessing us on one hand with this information and pulling somebody else from out of a, a, a mindset or uh, belief that they held on and been held captive to for so many years. So we'll, we'll bless him with that. Baruch Hashem, well said. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm cranked up on this one. And you know why? I, because all this week the devil been kicking my can up and down the street, and I paid a price to put this one together. So I'm really excited to get this one off the ground because this is something that, like I said, Yahweh gave to me a few years ago. And so let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start off over here with a law in the Torah that illustrates a spiritual point, as you said, we're going to get into. It's not so much about the physical, although it did happen back in those days. still happens today, but we're trying to emphasize more the spiritual. In other words, how do you unveil the spiritual dimension of what a scripture in Torah is trying to say mm -hmm. and find evidence of that when it happens in the New Testament? So in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1, I titled this, Lack of Seed Disqualifies You. Lack of seed disqualifies you. So if you're going to walk in this way, you better make real sure that the seed that Yahweh put in you is able to project out from you and produce fruit, mm -hmm. produce offspring, you know, for Yahweh mm -hmm. to your account. And so if that seed is corrupted in any kind of way, you are disqualified. And that's the nature of this scripture. So let's go ahead and read this. It says, He who is crushed as to split or wounded in the stones to be mutilated physically, or the testicles is what it's referring to, or be mutilated physically or mentally, his privy member of his penis that pours forth or by cutting off, as to make a covenant by cutting the flesh, shall not enter the assembly of Yahweh. And we're going to see evidence of this spiritual concept in the New Testament where individuals got themselves caught up in situations that did exactly what it's saying here. You're cut off from the assembly. You might still be professing Yahweh. You still might be professing Yahshua. You still might be professing any of the things that cliche statements that people like to make. That is not evidence that the seed of you that's inside of you, placed there by Messiah, is authentic. And we got plenty of scriptures where Yahshua says, and they will say to me in that day, uh, Master, Master, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not heal the sick in your name? And so forth. And he goes on to say, I never knew you, you who practice Torahlessness. Mm -hmm. So just saying you do this and that and the other is not the litmus test. The litmus test is how well grounded are you to the word where you're not mixing other covenants? Because this is what this text is talking about. If you cut your flesh, whether, and we, I think we talked before a little bit about the pariah circumcision yeah. last time, you're cut off. That's it. You're gone. You know, if your testicles get crushed, well, in the physical sense, if your testicles are crushed, what that means is you cannot produce any offspring. And we know that those who served in the temple could not have any defects on them. Mm -hmm. Just like the sacrifices that were presented in the temple could not have any defects. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament dispensation, we, have, we don't have a temple, we don't have a priesthood other than the fact that we are Melchizedek priests. Yeah. Okay, And we need to keep ourselves unspotted from this world and how it tries to influence us and make its way inside to this covenant where your testicles get crushed. Mm -hmm. And now you do not have the spiritual authority to execute that which you would like to do and you just can't do it. 
And unfortunately for a lot of people, they're not aware where things have crept into that have caused this problem. We're going to go into a little bit of that as well. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on. So I want to take just one example mm -hmm. to illustrate this point, how things creep, creep in. Um, one time when we had a fellowship, somebody came to me and said, John, are we, uh, are we going to do Teshklik? And I go, what is that? Oh, well, you know, we go to the, uh, a lake or a stream and we throw bread in the water. And this was, was for Yom Teruah that was coming up. And I said, are you out of your mind? Because I knew right away, I'd never heard of this before. But I knew right away Yahweh saying this is a spirit of Jewish, um, uh, what do you call it, um, superstition. Mm -hmm. Now, I never heard of this before, but Yahweh gave me a word right on the spot. He is trying to tell you that he practices Jewish superstition. Mm -hmm. And I said, we don't do that in this assembly. But what it did was it got me to go and investigate and find out what this is. Now, it's not my intent to go through a whole historical record of where this uh, went through in detail or anything like this. It's a concept to show how these things today, as it did back then, creeps its way into the body of Messiah. And I later come find out there's a lot of people that celebrate this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It comes from Judaism. It comes from uh, Talmudic teachings. So Tishlik uh, literally means casting away. So in other words, the idea is that when Yom, they would call it Rosh Hashanah, which is another thing that was borrowed from the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not called Rosh Hashanah in the scriptures. It's Yom Teruah. Yeah. However, uh, the idea is, is that you're supposed to cast away, get rid of your sins. Okay. And so they, I didn't put it in here, but what happened is the Jews, the, the learned Jews of their day, the religious Jews, when they were in captive in Babylon, uh, used to watch the Babylonian priest on this same day now of, of what they call Rosh Hashanah, which is Yom Teruah, the Babylonians celebrated that same day as their feast. Okay, And they used to go to a river, uh, the Euphrates actually, and they used to take, in their case, they used to take stones mm -hmm. and throw them over their shoulders into the water mm -hmm. for superstitious beliefs that somehow that the creator of heaven and earth will give them a blessed harvest the next time around, amongst other things. But anyway, this comes from Babylonian Zoroastrianism, however you say that. <laughs> That's what it kind of looks like. The ancient religion of Iran. And did you know that eating of apples and honey and gefilte fish of the Ashkenazi Jews was borrowed from that religion? So when Passover comes around and other holy days where that is done, okay, it's a tradition of men, but the question is, where did you get that from? Mm -hmm. This is what we in the body of Messiah have to scrutinize. When people come to us and they, they try to propose something, you just don't take it hook, line, and sinker, okay? So what they used to do is they, take a, they had a custom of making packets from dates fronds filled with soil and animal manure animal manure okay 15 days before rosh hashanah and then what they would do is the manure represents sin dirty stuff in your life and then what they do is they toss breadcrumbs or other foods to the fish in the water now this is the jews now mimicking what the babylonians used to do um Either consciously or unconsciously, they feel that the bri bribe of breadcrumbs will stop Satan from accusing them of past misdeeds before the uh, creator of heaven and earth. Underlying the practice is the belief that the creator and demons are always near water. So what they believe, without going into further too much detail, mm -hmm. they believe that demons were in the fish. Mm -hmm. So when they willfully came to the water and the breadcrumbs resembling their sins because leavened bread, they would throw it to the fish, and when they eat it, it would satisfy the fish, therefore satisfying the demons in the fish, mm -hmm. so that those demons would not go before Yahweh and accuse these Jews of any evil wrongdoing because they pacified the fish or pacified the demons. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us out there in the body of Messiah know that if you're practicing this, this is what you do? 
because it's a spirit, an unclean spirit, that concocted this idea. And yet it's very prevalent in the body of Messiah that people like to go out there and borrow from other faiths and bring it into the body of Messiah and corrupt the seed. So this is one way you disqualify yourself because Yahweh is, as we know, is a jealous Elohim. And he doesn't want you missing, mixing Gentile practices in with his ways. And so it's our job and our responsibility to try to stay as far away from that as possible. But knowledge is power. Yes, it is. If you don't know they're seducing you, you don't know. And I had to go back and tell these people, do you understand what you're doing? And they didn't know. And when I told them, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. Now, whether they ever stopped, I don't know, but at least they were told. So I want to bring up this idea real quick here about the crushing of the testicles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's all about the seed. It's all about the seed. And so we're going to use Abraham, an account here. To illustrate a point, and I know me, me people have rob, probably read this set of scriptures, right? There's only a few that I'm going to use, and it probably went over their heads. But this is about discussing and bringing these things out into the open. So let's, I'm going to read this real quick. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled that had dominion over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh. That's what most translations say. Mm -hmm. However, in the Greek, it means on the soft part of my genitals or testicles. So a picture is Abraham sitting in a seat, I guess, of some sort. And he asked his best servant, who's in charge of everything that he owns and has commissions him and trust him mm -hmm. with his possessions to please come and take your hands and hold my testicles. Now, today, we would think that's very perverted. But you got to understand Abrahamic covenant concepts. you got to understand blood covenant contracts. There are things that they did back then that we don't do today in these cultures. Uh, but it had not a perverted meaning. It had a deep spiritual meaning. Because when that man held his testicles and he swore, well, let's go ahead and read some more here so we can see. And I will make you swear seven times seven, the number of completion, mm -hmm. by Yahweh, the Elohim of heaven and the Elohim of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom um, dwell. Okay? So he had to hold Abraham's testicles because they are testimonies. Mm -hmm. Testicles come from the word testimonies. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we go back, I forgot to elaborate on that just for a minute. If you look at this picture here that I that I made with Yahweh sitting on the throne, you have the two tablets of testimony beneath them in the ark in the ark. Those are representation of his testicles that are sitting on the mercy seat where the seed of life resides. And that's why we're told that the commandments or the Ayitz Kaim, the tree of life. It gives life. It doesn't kill. It, it, it would if you misuse it as any law, okay? But the point here is that the two tablets of stone are a resemblance or a, a, an archetype of his testicles, which is where the seed of life comes from. So let's go back here. I just wanted to show that real quick here. And so this man would have to hold his testicles and swear seven times he will not do what he has told him, please do not do. So what I get from that is, is that the seed of life, the authority that came from his testicles, Abraham's testicles, was delegated influence or authority to his servant. And if he broke those testimonies, or that testimony that he made, or that promise that he made to him, that vow that he made, okay, because vows are very serious, then there would have been serious consequences for him. Any thoughts on that at all? I'm, I'm looking at it like, which we'll read later, every, what we call parables. Mm -hmm. Everything that Yahweh does, 
he compares it to an earthly event, a physical event, but it has a spiritual concept to it, a spiritual meaning which he's trying to bring us to. You know, he's moving us from one place. Last right. week we talked about from glory to glory. glory, to glory from right. one glorious, glorious state to another, another glorious state. But the concept is still the same, but the meaning is a deeper meaning. It came from outward to inward now. And so whatever you allow inwardly is coming outwardly. Instead of cover, being instead of being covered up, right? You know, we put on different identities constantly to express to somebody who we are, until we begin to open our mouth up, and what really comes out <laughs> yeah, shows right, who you right. really are. Exactly. Oh, I thought this was that type mm -hmm. of person, and we see it all the time, especially in the body of Messiah, people pretending to be one thing. But then when they open up their mouth, you see a completely different person. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is what I'm getting out of this. Abraham wants Isaac to be of the same type he's been molded, the same mold mm -hmm. that he's been molded from. I want my son molded from this because if he joined to these Canaanites, He's going to take on a different identity. Amen. And that means that his seed will be crushed in that moment. Exactly. Because he's got other covenants mixed it's, in. It's not no longer pure right, anymore. Right, 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 right. That's it? Yes, it. Yes. Okay. No, I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what that is. So, um, like the other times, you, you pick some scriptures and we're going to go through them. And uh, I'll go ahead and read them. And so we're going to start in Mark chapter 7, verses 3 through 9. Uh, I'm missing 3. I wonder how that happened. Maybe I labeled it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what I did there. thought I proofread this. But anyway, the concept is the encroachment of Talmudic philosophy. Mm -hmm. The encroachment of Talmudic philosophy. So it says, when they come from the marketplace as the town square... They do not eat unless they wash by being fully wet in a ceremony ablution uh, to be sacred. And there are many other things which they have received, learned from an assumed office, I thought that was interesting in the Greek, mm -hmm. and hold with seizing strength like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Uh, I think verse 3 says uh, they question Yeshua about why do his disciples, ah, yes, yes. you know, right. uh, transgress the tradition of, of the, the elders. elders. Not right. Yahweh's commandments, mm -mm. but a tradition. Mm -hmm. And many of us uh, assume righteous, based, righteous or unrighteous based on our transgression. Today, I, I guess Yahweh is leading you to, so we are talking about those in the Hebraic roof movements, you know, uh, uh, where are you getting your traditions mm -hmm, from? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting your customs from? Uh, because all of these customs were designed to take away your righteousness in, in Yeshua, to give you some sort of self-righteousness. And all of us have been guilty of it. I, as I said in the opening statement, we coming through a journey that we're talking about things we experience. These are things that I myself were once uh, using and doing. Uh, we have the washing of hands before we eat. You know, uh, in, in the uh, culture today, uh, if the health department came and inspected your, your business establishment, they want to know that your hot water comes on within so many seconds mm -hmm. and that you know how many seconds you have to wash your hands vigorously, wash them all the way up to your wrists and everything and take the paper. These are ways that they consider you undefiled and not contaminated. But what's on the inside? You see what I'm saying? We got our priorities we, in reverse. We, right? They can't see mm -hmm. how corrupt that you is. And, 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 and for the life of me, uh, this thing they got going on now, uh, uh, this virus thing, you can't tell they got the virus. No, no you can't. 
huh? Mm -mm. It only exposes when it comes out and produces itself like sin. It only shows up when it comes from the inside out. But if you're just looking at a person based on appearance, how would you know they're a sinner? You have to have spiritual insight and, dis and discernment. And so this yeah. tradition that they had back then really justified them as being righteous ones or ones as the scripture there it, uh, translates it, that's learned. He knows the way to tell me. He knows how to tell me how I should present myself or what, what manner of person I should be. Just forget about Moses and the Torah. Mm -hmm. I'm in the, in the position now. I'm in Moses' seat. So this is what I'm teaching you. Didn't say Moses in, in verse 3. It said the tradition of the elders. Right. Not Moses' traditions. Right. So today, what traditions are you receiving? Because man don't change, you know, through history. We all fall into the same traps and we don't question, you know. It's about awareness, you know. It's about coming to an awareness. It's not about we're here to try to condemn anybody. Exactly. This is about coming to an awareness. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Now, what you do with that information is totally up to you. But you will suffer the consequences, you know, if you don't do anything with it. Eventually, you will have to pay the piper for it. So in verse 5, it says... Then the Pharisees, a religious separatist secretary, and scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not walk as a companion, as proof of their ability to live according, just like you said, according not to Torah, but to the tradition of Jewish Talmudic law? Because that's where the tradition of the elders come from. So they're taking up issue with them directly right there. They're taking up issue with them right there. And, you know, I'm just going to break for just a second here. It just dawned on me, this thing like you brought up about the virus. Mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't subscribe to the so-called experts who are telling you this is the way things have to be done, you're an outsider. You don't fit in the mold on the inside and where everybody else is conforming to what we're saying. And I'll, most people are conforming out of intimidation. They don't necessarily really believe it, but out of intimidation, they're conforming. It's the same thing. It's like I said in the last video. They are trying to take away your sovereignty. Recognize what is happening. I'm not saying don't wear the mask. I'm not saying don't uh, wash your hands. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about the bigger motive behind this whole thing is what you got to really be careful about and, 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 and pay attention to. That's what I'm trying to get to. So these guys are doing the same thing here. They're not promoting Moses. They're the authority. And they're saying, why are you not doing according to Talmudic law? So it goes on to say of the elders who are older senior Sanhedrims, but eat bread that is unleavened, show bread, which is unleavened bread, mm -hmm. with unwashed, shared, defiled, unclean, and unholy hands. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you put your grubby hands into the bowl, mm -hmm. you've now contaminated, even if they're not grubby, be, because you didn't wash it three times like they said, mm -hmm. you've now defiled every, all the rest of the bread in there. And when everybody else takes it, now they're defiled, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a lot of nonsense. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go, they go so much more deeper than that. We're just trying to cover the basics on this. So in verse 6, he answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, who are a stage-playing character, as it is written, as a valuable prize of me with their lips. I mean, this people honors as a valuable prize of me with their lips, as a pouring out of water, in other words, they're, they're very zealous about it. Oh, Elohim, oh, Elohim, you know, oh, Adonai, Adonai. You know, they're very passionate about what they're doing, okay? And it's pouring out like water, you know? It looks real good. But their heart, where the thoughts and feelings reside, is far from me. Far from me. Verse 7. And in vain, through a manipulated search, to no end purpose, they worship me. <laughs> I can't think of anything more degrading. And I tell other believers this. 
what you're doing is, and I had this discussion with somebody yesterday, actually, where you're going is going to lead you to nowhere any good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to have to recognize that you have no way out except for one way. And I pointed out what that was. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that could happen to a person is you go through your whole life pursuing something. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the end of it, you thought we found out it was all a fraud. Mm -hmm. And now you're too old to turn it around and do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And you go to your grave knowing you were totally defeated because your whole premise for what you were chasing after was flawed and you got robbed of everything. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. When when he gave me these 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 um, verses here, he posed the question, and I would like to ask the same question: Who is it that you are worshiping? Mm -hmm. Yahweh or yourself? Uh, Yeshua had an encounter uh, with a Samaritan woman at the well, and they went back and forth with some words, and. To just to end the conversation he had with her, he told her, you worship, you know not what. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he say, we know who we worship. Mm -hmm. Salvation is of the Jews. Mm -hmm. He say, so those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Do you have both of them together? Because there's no spirit within traditions of Yahweh. It's a dead seed. It's, 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 it's the spirit of man that you're seeking to get man's approval, but whose approval should we really be um, inspiring mm -hmm. to get? I don't know if you're with me on this. Oh, I'm with and, you. And, and we, I've been on that journey because I want to be accepted, but my accepting is not based on, is Yahweh pleased with me? You with me? Mm -hmm. it's, it's based on, is he pleased with me? Am I, do I have my uh, attire on correctly? Am I saying the right words that he want to hear? I sat in a congregation, and I'm telling you, I hear them every Sabbath. I'm so glad we're not like them sinners. <laughs> we keep the Sabbath. I, I hear this. You with me? We're all sinners. Yeah. And we dress different. Uh -huh. We don't do what they do. But in our hearts... The minute you give the opportunity, you find all the things they were doing that they say they was glad they were not doing. Yep. So all of the speaking they were doing was in vain because they were only speaking that way because the man wanted them to speak that way. You know, way. I, I, I think that they're, part of that problem is that when people come into the faith, and whether it's this faith or other faith, I think it's a, a, a generally... Uh, a phenomenon that exists and that is when you come into a faith and you don't know much about it but you're somehow convicted of it you hinge on everything the leader's telling you mm -hmm. and you want to please that leader and that is the problem right there because just as you stated mm -hmm. if your focus is on pleasing that leader and I'm not saying you should go against them right. I'm just simply saying if your focus is to please the leader and not scrutinize everything that person is telling you, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah. And that's where it leads you down this road like you're just talking about. So the very first thing you could do is protect your sovereignty. Scrutinize everything that people are saying, including what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Scrutinize everything. I don't want you to believe what I'm telling you. Go look this up for yourself. Yes. And then test it out and see which one has the weight. Yes. Yes. And if you're not willing to do that, you're done. You're gone. Mm -hmm. you're, there's no hope for you. Mm -hmm. Unless Yahweh has some mercy on your rear end and he decides to look down on you and do something for you. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't have any pity for people like that. And when mm -hmm. you look in the book of Revelation, that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. You have the sheep and you have the goat. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are rebellious and will not acknowledge Yahshua HaMashiach as the Messiah who's coming back, mm -hmm. they're going to have a heavy price to pay. Yahweh ain't going to have no mercy on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to seek death and they're not going to find it. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. They worship me teaching for instruction, learning of the commandments of men. There we go. Mm -hmm. For laying aside 
through omission of not mentioning the commandment as an or the Torah mm-hmm. as an authoritative prescription of Yahweh, not from men, mm-hmm. but of Yahweh. Mm-hmm. You hold with seizing strength. They mm-hmm. won't give it up. Mm-mm. And it's the same today. They won't give it up. Mm-mm. Want to hold on to your tradition and replace that with the word of Yahweh. The tradition of Jewish Talmudic law of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. Mm-hmm. He said in a systematic discourse to them, all too well you reject by de-esteeming, neutralizing, and despising the commandment as an authoritative prescription of Yahweh that you may keep from loss or injury your tradition. Mm-hmm. That it's, it's almost self-explanatory it for is. a person to say, let me examine, am I walking in this? Who am I, who am I really worshiping? Who am I believing? You know, um... It's so many times uh, we walk. Uh, I think you brought it up earlier about the uh, Tashlit and um, what they call Rosh Hashanah. Now, they uh, say that this is the Jewish New Year, <laughs> you know. Well, if you got your own New Year, you're going to celebrate it. But don't mix it in. You with me? I'm trying to stay on subject with well, the, no, with you're the right, seed, corrupting the seed. The Jewish idea that, that Rosh Hashanah is the new year is not neither in scripture. It was borrowed from the Babylonian priest because that was their new year. It, exactly. And the scripture tells you it's the seventh month. So do your year begins in the seventh month? <laughs> uh let everybody know. I haven't figured that one out. You know? I mean, I have. And, I and, and then you go on yeah. down further in your new year, and now you really want to be in the seventh month because you get into the rest of the feasts. Now, right. everybody's forgotten about when a new year, so why you keep talking about the seventh month? Uh-huh. Do our month start with seven? Or uh, is seven, like you're saying, is a completion of something? Yeah, it's confusion. You, you with me? Yeah. And so we're we're... We're just talking about things that might seem minor to everybody else. It's like they like the uh, the Christmas thing they like to celebrate, mm-hmm. you know, and the Halloween stuff they like to do. And oh, Easter, it's just yeah. fun. Right. You, are you just doing this for fun or are you doing it for life? You know, uh, Yahweh gave us a way to live. And whatever is not of faith is sin. Sin. And he gave yeah. us a way to live. Right. I, why we're not content? Why we're not happy? Why we're not pleased with what he gave us? Why do we need to add more? And I mean, these people will tell you, oh, he said, don't add or take away. Because whatever you add, the play is going to be added. You, you, you know, and, and yet they'll turn around and they will add something. Why are we sitting there as though we're not hearing? You know, Isaiah talked about all this. They became dull. Dull of hearing unless they hear and they see and their hearts be healed and they repent. You know, the scripture, uh, I had told you this before, and it shocked me when I first got the word from Yahweh. It was about four years ago now, I think. And I was reading uh, where it says, and there'll be a famine of the hearing of the word. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Yahweh said, that's not what I meant by what I said. And I'm like, come again? Mm-hmm. And he said, there'll be a famine of the hearing. Mm-hmm. If there was going to be a famine of the word, I just would have said there was a famine of the word. But there's a famine of the hearing. Mm-hmm. We're putting out these scriptures like on a silver platter. We're baby spoon feeding you. Mm-hmm. And if you can't, still can't get this, you don't have the Shema. The Shema is hear, O Israel, hear with intelligence. It's not just to hear it, hear it with intelligence so that you can perceive in your mind what this means and how does it apply to me. So we need to be doing the Shema. When these things are being shown like this, you need to ask for intelligence, for discernment, for understanding, for wisdom. Baruch Hashem. I know when you came up with the title, I I, I pretty much receive all of this because I'm sitting there and I'm... I, I re-examine myself through every mm-hmm. process daily 
that's me you know i, I don't seek to justify myself I, I let the word examine me, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then it's up to me whether I want to repent. And that's just, this just talking about my experience. And what I found is that in this passage right here, and we're going to see more of it, oh, but I just yeah. want to bring it out right here. Oh, yeah, the big guns are coming Not out. Not one time did they say, uh, why are they acknowledging the traditions of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. uh does say Yahweh right, right. but every word that came through a prophet even through Yeshua you know it was does say Yahweh not me why you are not listening to what I'm telling you mm -hmm. he letting you know they, they call him seer sometimes right. but he's showing you that he's looking at you and he's letting somebody who you don't have a clue about see what he's seeing and yet you still look as though it's that person that's saying they don't know what they're talking about because they don't know me. Well, you know for yourself I know what you're doing. That's what Yeshua is telling you. You know <laughs> I know what you're doing. I just came here. You don't even give me no kind of respect. Right. Who is he? What good can come out of Nazareth? Right. You already be, be, belittled me. You already called me a devil. Hmm? How can I see all of this stuff except my father right. who sent me, show, right. Right. show me. I'm just giving you what he's saying. And that's all we're doing. We're just giving you what he's saying. And I tell him this in the prison, in the jail all the time. Don't, don't take my word as you said. Mm -hmm. Trace it and see do it come from heaven. Because if it didn't come from heaven, then disregard it. Because there ain't nothing I can say to help you. Right. These words are not mine. But the father that sent me, that what was Yeshua was telling them and what they did. Oh, they went to discredit him even more. And the mass majority of the people took sides with the men because those men can hurt me, but Yahweh can't hurt me. I don't know if you're with me. Oh, I'm with you. I, I, I just want to just sum all of this last three verses that we read up into that. Who... Who is it that you worshiping? Question yourself. What is it that you're doing to get your righteousness from? Right. These customs and these traditions, they're not your righteousness. They're not your identity. All your identity is in Yeshua. Right. I mean. Stand up for him. Mm -hmm. Protect his honor. Honor his name. He laid his life down for us. Honor him. And if you won't do it, you're not respecting him either. Exactly. And I didn't realize that Yashua was the first one that didn't get true respect. I thought it was Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, but no, uh, the, the, that's the truth of the matter is, is that if we are doing the same, then we're no different than these guys here, the mm -hmm. Talmuds, you know, the, the Sanhedrins and the, the rabbis and the whole group of them, you know. Um so let's continue on here. I think I already read that. Yeah. Yes. All right. So now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 23. Mm -hmm. And what I got out of this is purifying yourself through rabbinics. Mm -hmm. Purifying yourself through rabbinics. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't think most people realize rabbinics was never always around. Mm -hmm. You know, it got started around 250 BC after the Babylonian captivity when they came back. And uh, that's a whole story there. You can go read in history that's called the rabbinic period. Mm -hmm. And they showed how they see the Jews seize power over the temple, mm -hmm. which is forbidden in Torah because mm -hmm. Yahweh tells the priest, don't let none of the other tribes in no way, shape or form come into the temple and take up. Any responsibilities in here? This is commissioned strictly for you. That's an abomination. And what did the Jews do? They came in, they took over the temple. Mm -hmm. Not going to get into the big history about all that stuff. But I remember when I was in a messianic place some years back, you know who, what I'm talking about. The head rabbi came to me and made a proposition. Mm -hmm. And he says, I think you'd be a good candidate to stutter, study under me rabbinics to be my assistant. Mm -hmm. I said, no, sir, I'm not interested in that. You know, I knew way back then, this is like 20, 20 something years ago now. And uh, he goes, oh, you, you would learn so much more. I said, I know enough. I know, I didn't tell him what all that I knew, but I knew that rabbinics was not what Moses taught. Mm -hmm. Moses was not a Jew. Mm -hmm. So 
Don't allow these rabbis, messianic rabbis even more so, because they're an infusion, talking about different covenants, they're an infusion of rabbinics or Talmudic Judaism and tradition of the elders and the Sanhedrin with Christianity. You've got the worst of two covenants coming together to make a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I could go on all day about ranting on that, but let's get to the scriptures here. Mm -hmm. And let's see how this plays out. We go along and let's see the spiritual meaning. Whoa, great grief to you, scribes and Pharisees, a religious separatist secretary, hypocrites, mm -hmm. who are a stage playing characters. You cleanse by purifying the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion by mm -hmm. pillaging with force and self indulgence due to a lack of power for self control. Blind Pharisee as the order of importance and cleanse mm -hmm. by purifying the inside of the cup and dish that you, that the outside of them may be clean with purity also. Mm -hmm. Whoa, great grief to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites who are straight stage playing characters for you are like whitewashed tombs as a state of being confined as a prisoner, which indeed appear beautiful and flourishing outward outwardly, but inside are full of swelling outwardly of dead of a corpse of men's bones and all uncleanliness of impurity lacking morality of a demonic source. Mm -hmm. Wow, if that ain't to the point, I don't know what is. Verse 28, even so, you also outwardly appear righteous as holy and innocent men, but inside you are full and well supplied of hypocrisy, acting the part of a deceitful character and lawlessness who is not subject to Torah. Oh, that's blatant right there. Mm -hmm. And say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in blood of the prophets. Therefore, you are witnesses that bear the record against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt concerning yourselves. Any thoughts on that? Yes. Um, just bringing it home, um, what we talked about earlier. Who who are you worshiping? You with me? Mm -hmm. uh, um, he's telling them, I'm seeing everything that you do. You, you, you put all these burdens on people to don't touch this, to wash your hands like this. And you yourself really don't do that stuff because on the inside, you all corrupted. You're just making proselytes of people and not teaching them the way. You're not really showing them the way. And not only that, you know what they're not doing? They're not showing empathy for the burden that is on the person that you're putting these things on. No, not, that means that means the spirit of empathy and sympathy and all that kind of stuff is gone. You're just a cold hearted person that wants to regulate that person and put burdens on them because it gives you power and authority. Just, just think about some of the things that they teach. I mean, just to be outwardly. Um, I want to be loved by everybody. Everybody ain't going to love you. <laughs> Everybody is not going to no, no. like you. Right. You, I, I heard now these Jewish teachers. I heard um, a few months ago during the Passover season. They said Passover and Easter are tied together. They on television teaching this. Are, are you with me? I'm with huh? you. How are they tied together? I mean, just think about it now. Yahweh is looking down. Say so he got eyes that run back and forth through the earth. And then he pick a prophet out and show him something. He told Ezekiel, he said, go, I want to take you to the temple and see what they doing. Huh? And he said, okay, I showed you that. Now let's go again. And I want to see you greater abomination that they do in the temple. And they were worshiping that son. And every year they go out there with them to worship the son. Um, John, come on. They, they ain't doing nothing new today. All you got to do is search the scriptures mm -hmm. and you'll find out today they're doing the same thing. If we wouldn't have did the same thing our father's doing, you're doing worse than what your fathers did. Same garbage, different day. Same stuff, but you're doing more. Mm -hmm. you adding more than what they did back then. So how we can say condemn them back then for not being sick? No, we're how guilty. can we? Yeah condemn those that were in the wilderness for unbelief when we're walking into today i was there 
I was there doing all of this stuff because that's what they was teaching. And I'm thinking they Jews, they got to know. No. That's but a big mis the misnomer. The true Jew, mm -mm. Yahshua, was teaching and I wouldn't even receive his spirit of teaching because there's no way he would talk to me. That you, was my You got to go through the man. But one day I read when Peter went over to a Gentile named Cornelius and he said, I perceive that Yahweh is no respect to a person. I used to think he just respect one kind of person. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he talks to me. I'm, I'm, I mean, he's blessing you and pulling me over here. I just didn't get here. I didn't know you was in this world. Mm -hmm. How did we meet? <laughs> Different roads, same journey. Same journey, right. All of us, we got different roads. And when I say that, different experiences. Some, some might have more. I had a bunch of them. I had a bunch of snares. You know, some might have less. But whatever the snares was, he's pulling us out of the stairs, mm -hmm. loosening us from those cords and bringing us to him. We ain't bringing us to each other. But if we're in him and following him, we're going to fellowship. But you got to want it, though. Yes. You got to want it. If you don't have any interest in it, you know, it's like the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Yes. If you don't want to drink of the living waters that's coming through these teachings, you're not, you're not going to have your thirst quenched. Yes. yes. Keep yes. drinking the soda pop. Yes. And for you Jews out there, Messianic Jews, rabbis, all these guys, it's not about condemning you. Exactly. It's about waking up. You're doing the same thing to people that you did back in the times when these scriptures were written. Tell There's the no difference. Yeah, just wake up, look truth. at what you're doing, mm -hmm. and let your people truly get set free. Yeah, you're on borrowed time. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I'm a prophet of Yahweh, and I'm telling you, there's a reason why He's resurrected this ministry in this way that He has. Mm -hmm. Time is short. Mm -hmm. You don't have the time to keep playing these games that you're playing. Yes. And when it comes time to pay the piper, you ain't going to have what it takes to pay the piper. Mm -hmm. It's going to be too late for you. And I think mm -hmm. Yahshua told the Jews, and it was in Luke, I did a teaching on that. I think it was the accursed teaching. The end, uh, to live or to be accursed, if I'm not mistaken. And he prophesied to them Jews that he was talking to his day. Mm -hmm. He said, you are not Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. Going back to the seed thing again. Mm hmm you're not Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. You're his children, mm -hmm. descendants, mm -hmm. but you're not his seed. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you today, mm -hmm. when he was telling them this, mm -hmm. when the last great day of the feast comes mm -hmm. at the end of the millennium and that hundred years is finished, this same bullcrap attitude you're putting on me now mm -hmm. and calling me the devil and all this stuff, you're going to coast your way through that hundred years after the resurrection and you're going to come to the end of the hundred years and we're going to see you never intended to change. And he's telling them in those texts, mm -hmm. you are going to die the second death. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. going into the lake of fire for the second death and you Jews will be destroyed who act that way. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's from my mouth to your ears, which I got from Yahshua. I deciphered that thing in Luke. Mm -hmm. You want to know more about that? That's a heavy set of scriptures in there, in that teaching, to live or to be a curse. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you Jews, you have the covenant. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with it? Teaching rabbinics? Talmud? Some of you want the, the Gentiles to keep that? Or you want them to keep doing their Christian stuff. But you don't want them to come into Israel. You know, and there's a whole gamut of different levels of that there. Mm -hmm. Some are not as bad as others, but it don't matter how bad you are or how less bad you are. If you're proposing those doctrines in your congregations, you are bringing your people into bondage. And I'm speaking to the people because they're the gatekeepers that watch over them. So I'm going to circumvent the gatekeeper for those of you that are sitting in these places and you're listening to this hogwash. Mm -hmm. You better wake up. You don't have a lot of time to keep playing this game. The curtain is starting to close. And you better get your acts together. And that's been fulfilled in your hearing right now. Yes. Like it or not, it's been fulfilled in your hearing. So... Uh, back to this again. 
Because you build the tombs of the prophets, mm -hmm. who are foretellers under divine inspiration and adorned to put in order decorations the monuments of the righteous who declare who uh, declare holy and innocent. Uh, I think we did all that. Didn't oh, we? we did that? Yes. You had finished. Um, no, I didn't get through that. Yeah, I did. Oh, I must have went backwards. I'm sorry. And, and so did you want to say something on that? One thing on this, you know, when you say they like whitewashed tombs and... It's not comical, but it's just something that just came to me. You know, I've been to a diff, uh, various viewings, mm -hmm. you know, and they embalm the body. They dress them up and they groom them up and they buy the nice casted and all the flowers around them. And people come in and they say, how beautiful that person look. <laughs> well, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> but they can't see death. No. enough to fear to say i gotta come through this way is it anything that i need to be right to be prepared to go through this process you know all they can see is how beautiful it is but we're mourning the separation but we're not taking an example we got an appointment for this all we can see is the beauty in death how is that beautiful People go through all kinds of psychological stuff in those situations wake up to make and, themselves feel better. Yeah, wake up and get ready. Yeah, exactly. Wake up and get ready. All right, so in verse 30 it says, um, and say if we had lived in the days of our father. Did I read this yes. already? I already read this. Yes. It's been a long week. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we're going to go to 2 Timothy. We've got to kind of try to move along a little quicker here because mm -hmm. uh, we got still a lot of bombshells yes. to unload here. Yes. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, mm -hmm. I got this, a change in attitude that leads to immoral beliefs. Mm -hmm. A change in attitude that leads to immoral beliefs. Mm -hmm. See, in order to accept Talmud, rabbinics, all that kind of stuff, you have to have a change in your attitude of your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that attitude allows you access to these beliefs. So if you don't have the right attitude, it's going to take you to a place where you don't, you really shouldn't be going. So mm -hmm. in verse one, it says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come mm -hmm. for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud as to be above others with haughtiness, blasphemers against Yahweh, disobedient as the, as unpersuadable to of obedience to parents unthankful, unholy, unloving, mm -hmm. without natural affection, with hard-handedness, hard hard -handed, mm -hmm. unforgiving, slanderers, with self-control, without self-control, brutal, to the point of savagery. That's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Despisers with a hostile spirit of good. And mm -hmm. we're, boy, we're seeing that on the streets today, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Traitors who give themselves over to the enemy's hands, headstrong, Mm -hmm. whose heads are so clouded and inflated with self-conceit, haughty lovers and of pleasure rather than lovers of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Having in a form, having a form and resemblance of Elohim, mm -hmm. which is holiness with piety, but denying with contradiction and rejecting its power that is miraculous of itself mm -hmm. and of from such people turn away by deflecting it anybody anybody that's trying to turn you uh, against the commandments of yahweh turn away from mm -hmm. them turn away um for this one i just labeled it like your topic mm -hmm. and i said has the talmud crushed the testicles of your mind and heart exactly and i won't get deep into the various ways because it's all outlined in there mm -hmm. if any one of these things have came upon us and i'm telling you i've been in all of them hard-headed mm -hmm. high-minded puffed up all kind of way it was crushing me because i was using scriptures to be that way when mercy right, right, right. and judgment and truth was least on that. If any one of them things is speaking to you like they spoke to me, repent. Repent and believe that it's Yahweh that's revealing this to you. We're not calling anybody out. No. <laughs> we just explaining experiences, places we've been through, things we experienced, the 
to stop a lot of people from going through this stuff. Things this that process. nobody else wants to stand up and talk about. Exactly. The truth. Just tell them the truth. Just the truth. It's That's that all. simple. Okay. So, um, we're now, we're not going to go through some of the ones that I picked. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of scripture here. So what we're going to do is kind of like the last time. I'm just going to read through it, mm -hmm. okay, and mm -hmm. get through verses 4 through 23. And then what we're going to do is we'll come back and we'll elaborate after I've read it. Mm -hmm. But I want everybody to be able to soak up and feel what's going on. You, you know, the thing is, I can only do this stuff if I dive into the scriptures and I become a part of the characters. Mm -hmm. That's how I can feel what this guy's saying and what that guy's saying, what this one's doing and what that's doing, mm -hmm. and add the descriptiveness to the interpretation of the word that the translators didn't use mm -hmm. to give it more flavor. That's what it is in the red. Mm -hmm. And I put the Greek in there so you can go double check and see, okay, yeah, this, and I've had people do that and say, yeah, that, that's what the words say, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not embellishing anything here beyond what it is other than a few adverbs and nouns to make it sound right. So I'm going to go ahead and read through this up to verse 23. Then we're going to come back and circle back and, and elaborate on whatever you feel like you get out of this. Mm -hmm. Now this, I say, lest anyone should deceive and delude you with persuasion, which is enticing words. Now, well, I'll wait till we get to this point. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order a, of a dignified character at this time and the steadfastness established stability by your faith in Messiah. As you therefore have received Messiah Yahshua, the master, so walk by showing we have the capacity to be able to function in him, mm -hmm. rooted to the point of stability and built up in him and established through being confirmed in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving, with grateful language towards Yahweh. Beware with perception, lest anyone cheat as leading you away as booty by seduction of you through philosophy of Jewish sophistry, a mm -hmm. clever but misleading reasoning that comes from a love of wise things and empty deceit that uses cheating to delude according to, boy, this thing's temperamental. I got lost here. According to the, there it is, sorry, this uh, mouse is acting up a little bit. Tradition that puts in prison using Tal Jewish Talmudic law of men. According to the basic principles, which is an orderly arrangement of the world and not according to Messiah. For in a state of rest in him dwells to house permanently all the fullness with completeness of Elohim head and its divinity bodily. And you are complete, being perfect in its fullness, a state of rest in him who is the head of all principalities, which is the first estate and principal rule and power of privilege and superhuman capacity. In him you are also circumcised with circumcision that is mosaic with the rites associated with it. But without hands, made without hands, by putting off and divesting, removing the body of sins, of the flesh by the circumcision that is mosaic with the rites associated with it of Messiah. Buried to assimilate spiritually with him in baptism, in which you are also raised, roused from death, and revived with him through faith that is a moral conviction of Torah or gospel in the working of efficient energy of Yahweh the Father who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses, whether unintentional or willful transgression, and the circumcision as an unregenerate Gentile of your flesh, he has made alive to reanimate together with him, having forgiven as a favor and grant of kindness to graciously pardon you all trespasses. 
having wiped out the handwriting from a legal document of bondage of Talmudic law of requirements of civil, ceremonial, or ecclesiastical decrees that was against and planted covertly towards us, which was contrary as an adversary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross as an atonement of Messiah, having disarmed by divesting himself wholly from the principalities, which is the first estate and principal rule and powers, a privilege of superhuman capacity who are spiritual with delegated influence. He made a public spectacle by exhibiting of them, triumphing by conquering with victory over them. So let no one judge judicially, condemn or make a decree to the point of punishment and sue at a law of you in, broad, in, food, um, in food of meat or drink, eating or in drink or the act of drinking or regarding a festival that is holy for a new moon, festival that is of the first of the month, or Sabbaths that is weekly, which are shadow as an outline sketch in representation of things to come with expectation to attend. But the substance to be saved is in the body and is of the Messiah. Let no one cheat you of your reward of salvation through defrauding, taking delight in false humility that humiliates your mind and worship with a ceremonial observance of angels, of good tidings, whether a spirit of hu or human, intruding by looking into those things which he has not seen. Vainly, which leads to failure and causes one to be puffed up with pride and haughtiness by his fleshly mind, and not holding by retaining with strength fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished with aid fully supplied and knit to drive in unifying together by, with, by joints for fastening and ligaments, which is a unify, uniting principle, grows with the increase that is from Yahweh. Therefore, if you died with Messiah from the basic principles, orderly arrangements as a military formation of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to the regulations that are civil, ceremonial, or ecclesiastical laws made by men? Do not touch or attach oneself to. Do not taste. Experience something good or pleasurable. Do not handle by having anything to do with, which all concern things which perish that decays and inflicts corruption to the point of destruction with the using or consumption according which is joined to the commandments as a precept within Talmudic law and doctrines and instructions of men these things indeed have an appearance as a motive to communicate wisdom that appears higher spiritual wisdom but is worldly in self-imposed and unwarranted religion, false humility that humiliates your mind and neglect of the body, but are no more value of self-dignity of a high order against the indulgence of gratification of the flesh. There's a, there's a lot there. Yes, it is. <laughs> there's a lot there. Yes. Oh, yes. It just... It's one word and one voice. Paul is teaching the same thing that Yeshua teach. Beware. Mm -hmm. Watch out for the different craftiness and tricks and delusions that the enemy does when he catches one. Uh, the, the scriptures always talk about their heart getting fat. You know, when they get puffed up, Yahweh has blessed them. And so when they get all their worldly goods and their material things, they get puffed up like they don't need him anymore. He can do more. He can give you more. He gave you all what you got. So why you depart from him to pick up and follow the earthly way to get more of the earthly stuff? None of us can get what we have except Yahweh gave it to us. Serving him or not serving him. It's just the one who knows that they got it from him. I don't have to seek it from another. And here... Paul is telling them to beware. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you with me? It, 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 it's, it's amazing how we, we was talking earlier uh, a, few, uh, a little while ago 
about how they just pick up stuff the new year the easter mm -hmm. the halloween i mean they lure them with gifts uh halloween oh we're gonna put candy in the bag and just put some scriptures with it what what's that doing what is that doing uh, uh, you could give them candy any day of the week but is that the only time of the week, of the year you can give them a scripture mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you with me mm -hmm. and so what what are we doing just to hold on to these different traditions of man and to say that in one of them he's uh i know it's being used it's being used in the messianic circle as well as the christianity circle oh right there don't judge us for not keeping this the shabbat or the feast days right all that was a shadow they passed away but when i read it i just see it so differently he's telling no he's saying to me that no one judge me for keeping it mm -hmm. not for not keeping it but for keeping it but some some way it's been translated or widely accepted as saying don't judge us for not keeping it but in your even in your translations and in the regular scripture too i have yet to see the word not keeping in there so, actually it says the opposite yeah yeah so how how did they come to that conclusion and why is that conclusion being interpreted and taught because they refuse he say isaiah prophesied you you rejecting my commandments that you might keep your own traditions i don't want to hold on to what yahweh's given me because our traditions is more fun this set of text um I believe it was around verse five it said that i'm not no, sure. the one i'm looking for but i was I'm just summing sure. it up i can't really remember it was various scriptures in there but i couldn't just concentrate on them i was trying to sum the whole uh chapter up into everything goes back to your heart exactly you know here we go um this set of texts is so manipulated and maligned mm -hmm. by the christian world because what they're trying to do is they're trying to say this set of texts is they're christian and don't let anybody mm -hmm. come and tell you you have to keep the Sabbath, you have to keep the new moons, you have to keep the festivals and the you know dietary laws. Don't let anybody come and tell you as a Christian you don't have to do those things. Okay? That's how it's traditionally been portrayed. And clearly in this text, first of all, there was no Christian. Mm -hmm. These are Gentile believers who were grafted into the tr olive tree of Israel, who were New Testament believers, getting their nourishment from the apostles who taught them the Sabbath, mm -hmm. taught them the feast days, taught them the new moons, taught them the dietary laws to follow in those ways. What did Paul say? He says, follow me in the traditions as Yahshua handed them down to me. Mm -hmm. These words are Yahshua. Mm-hmm. The new moon, the Sabbath, the dietary law. Those are Yahshua. That is the truth. That is Yahshua in the, in the written form who came in the flesh to institute these. And we kind of went through this last time. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that as maybe I'll just back it up because it's important to look at this again. Let's see if I can find it. Uh... Here we go. Beware with perception lest anyone cheat mm -hmm. as leading you away as booty by seduction of you through philosophy. And the word philosophy in the Greek means Jewish sophistry. Mm -hmm. Okay? Jewish sophistry, which means a clever but misleading reasoning that comes from a love of wise things and empty deceit. Mm-hmm. What good. this is really about in this text is not Christians. 
This is about Orthodox Jews, Talmud of Judaism, rabbis, uh, Sanhedrin, you know, you can put them all, taking the traditions of the elder that comes through Talmudic law, and they're coming to the New Testament believers who do believe in the Sabbath. They do believe in the feast days. They do believe in the dietary laws and the new moons and, and all such things. Mm -hmm. And they're coming in, they're trying to say, it's, it's good you keep that stuff, but we're trying to tell you that if you really want to keep it the right way, you got to do it in this manner. Mm -hmm. And they use very clever Jewish reasoning based on philosophy to trick the unaware people. Oh, you know, that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to keep the Sabbath, uh, I really need to introduce this tradition. And we got them all over the place today yes. on the Sabbath. Yes. And that comes from Jewish sophistry. Mm -hmm. It's not biblical. Mm -hmm. And there's no righteousness in it, so you're wasting your damn time with those traditions because you're not going to get any righteousness out of those traditions. Mm -hmm. It's man concocted. Get real and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Clean your house. Mm -hmm. So this is all about Jews trying to infiltrate the New Testament believers and not tell them to not keep the days. Keep keeping them, but integrate these philosophies that we're telling you that it will make it more righteousness. You can't add more righteousness to Yahweh's word. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. man has any words that can add more righteousness to it. Mm -mm. If anything, if you accept what they're telling you, as we've been showing, you have crushed your testicles. Yes. Yes. The sperm and the semen of the spirit cannot come out of you and nothing good is going to come of it because Yahweh ain't going to bless it. Yes. He won't bless it. It's not of him. Mm -hmm. If it's not of him, he's not going to bless it. Mm -hmm. And we got to wake up to this thing. There was one other thing here I wanted to get to. I think it was in verse 14, maybe. If I can remember. No, further down, I think. Jesus thing. Here it is. Which are a shadow as an outline sketch and representation of things to come. And they haven't all come yet. Mm -hmm. So that means the shadow is still in effect. Mm -hmm. When I walk down the street, I still see a shadow. Mm -hmm. If I didn't see a shadow, I would know that I've been transformed into spirit. Mm -hmm. But because I do see a shadow, I know I'm still flesh. Mm -hmm. So as long as I'm flesh, that shadow is going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but the substance... I'm sorry... With expectation to attend. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to attend an event, which is prophetic in nature, mm -hmm. contained within the Sabbath and the feast days and other things, if you say they're all done away with? Mm -hmm. That means you're not looking to attend anything. And even more than that, you have no knowledge of what you think you might attend, but you couldn't say what it is and when it's going to actually happen and how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because your mindset, remember we talked about attitude is going to lead you into this? Mm -hmm. If you set your mind to have that kind of an attitude, you will not receive anything from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That means you're in ignorance and an unregenerate heathen. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. we got to get real about this thing. Th this is no joke, man. Mm -hmm. These words are real. These words are life. Mm-hmm. Now, and, I'm sorry, you got something you want yeah, to say? Yeah, one thing, okay. one thing. Um, even in the Messianic realm, it's still, they taking on the tradition of the elders. And they teach uh, the ones that are coming in or to call themselves Gentiles, oh, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling them, they in the midst of you, this group, and you say you Jewish according to the flesh. Right. And I'm looking over there. If we all one and they don't have to keep it, why should I have to keep it? Oh, because you Jewish. Well, the commandment of the Sabbath never say it's the Sabbath of the Jews. Yeshua told them Sabbath was made for man. You know, Psalm, and, Solomon and, and, said and, yeah, that. Yeah. The whole duty of mankind is to keep, keep the, the commandments. commandments. And so they, they get all into this. But Paul's whole point was, how are you going to let somebody who don't even believe in the Mashiach, huh? <laughs> yeah. Tell you about righteousness, huh? 
He said, all those things, what you're doing, don't let nobody take that away from you. He said, but always know that your salvation is Yeshua. That's your righteousness. It, it, uh, the commandments are righteous, but they're not your righteousness. Uh, the, the holy days, they're holy and sanctified. But that's not your righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's not your identity. That's your manner of life. But your identity is in Yeshua. Exactly. That's him and him alone. So why are we, why, who are we listening to? I want to get back. It's your mind. The testicles are, are they being crushed? The testicles are your mind to your heart. It starts got, here and yeah, then it gets down has into got you. got so corrupted right. and so hard that you can't even hear. You can't. Hear. Yeah. Small. With intelligence. Yes, right. With understanding. Huh? Yahweh. Right. Is a card. He's the only one. Love is the top of his list. The first two is love, love. If you can't do that, then the rest of them ain't going to do you no good. And you're not going to find that love mm. in these traditions. Oh, no. It's false humility, That's as a, we read. A self-righteousness. So Go ahead. the next short one I'm going to read through mm -hmm. here. Um, what I got out of this is trading one husband for another mm -hmm. because we're staying along this line here about your testicles being crushed. You're yes. losing your spiritual authority and strength Yes, where you cannot produce anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing cultivatable. We'll put it that way. So, um, so in that case, um, we're showing what I'm going to show here is that while you are in this process of trading one person, one um, belief system for another. I, I'll phrase it that way. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're you're bringing in Talmudic sources or Christian sources or anything like that, mm -hmm. and you're bringing it in. You're mixing it with Messiah. Mm -hmm. This is what this text is getting to, mm -hmm. and so this is what we're going to read. Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly of mm -hmm. egotistic, senseless recklessness, recklessness, and indeed you do bear with me. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous with warmth for you, and exceedingly from the divine jealousy that makes me envious with indignation. So he's getting angry mm -hmm. at what he's seeing. Mm -hmm. For I have betrothed by joining to the body you to one primary husband, one primary husband. Mm -hmm. There is no secondary. Mm -hmm. No sidekick. You know, it's kind of like I had said to you, and I've said it before. Um, <laughs> people are not going to like what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, you're in the bedroom with your wife in an intimate setting, and you're going to show affection for each other. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the middle of that, your wife or your husband says, I'd like to invite somebody else in to this relationship. You only got one wife and you only got one husband. Mm -hmm. Now, as a you as a human being, if you heard your spouse make a statement like that, you don't think you're going to get pissed off? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking divorce because I thought I knew my mate and they're showing me a secret side to them that somehow got in here. And now they want to entice me into this perverted relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, going back to this again, one primary husband. Mm -hmm. You can't have different husbands. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of scriptures that talk about the harlotry and stuff of Israel. She has many husbands and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh's a jealous Elohim. He don't like that. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament dispensation, this is what Shaul is trying to get across. So it goes on to say, For I have betrothed by joining you to the body to one primary husband that I may present as a recommendation of you as a chaste, clean, innocent, and perfect version who to me is an unmarried daughter to Messiah. But I fear to the point of being alarmed lest somehow as the serpent who is sly, cunning, sharp, and artfully malicious, deceived through seduction of Eve, Hava, by his craftiness, by way of sophistry. Here we go back to this 
similar idea of Jewish sophistry, mm -hmm. which is clever but misleading reasoning. So he's attributing what Satan did to Adam and Eve, the mm -hmm. trickery that he used in that garden. He's doing the same thing to these Corinthians. He's the same okay? spirit. Yeah. By way of sophistry, which is clever but misleading reasoning, so your minds with its false perceptions. Remember we said about the attitude up here? Mm -hmm. This mindset that if, if you don't guard this thing, mm -hmm. you're going to get false perceptions. Mm -hmm. And that's going to lead you down a road that's going to destroy you. And in this case, it's going to lead you to bring another husband into the relationship. Mm -hmm. So let's see what he goes on to say. False perceptions may be corrupted and ruined shriveled away by false moral influences from the simplicity that is not self-seeking that is in Messiah. For if he who comes preaching another Yahshua, whom you have not preached, who we have not preached, or if you received a different altered and strange spirit mm -hmm. of a de demonic nature, which you have not received by taking you and removing you with violence, it's a violent hostile takeover. Mm -hmm. You may not perceive it. It may sound real good, but its intention is to hostily take you over with violence. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or a different altered strange gospel, which you have not accepted. You may well just have to put up with it, mm -hmm. with suffering of it as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that clearly Paul is trying to show and, and there's more scriptures about this where he gets so frustrated that he basically says, because you traded in the husband I gave you for this other husband, you're done. Yeah. I don't have any hope for you anymore. Yeah. You're so far gone down that river with this new husband you got, I can't even bring you back anymore. You're gone. Mm -mm. That's how frustrated he got. Yeah. But that's what happens when you let this thing up here get ideas mm -hmm. that's not filtered by the word mm -hmm. and by truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, it's so many people out there just running from one doctrine to the next. they just all over the place. And, okay, I want to go over here this day, you know, because so-and-so is teaching this. And I want to go over there to this one because they teach that. It, 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 they're looking for a completeness in several or more places when they can find it all in one person. Right, Yeshua, right, right. You know, and so they don't realize that they're going to join themselves to another one. Uh, uh, some people sit up in places and they allow, like you say, it takes it away with force. They wrestling with it, you know, but in order to be accepted, they scared to say what they really believe. And so they adopt those to be accepted with those people. I, the prophets sit in a whole nation of rebellious people, but they did not go along with them, right, you know, right. in their belief. They still lived the manner of life they were commanded to live. If you sit in, in the midst of them because they disobedient, don't mean you have to be. That's right. You you with me? If if you know you're going, and don't, I ain't saying go in a false building <laughs> to do false worship. No, you're not doing that. I'm saying you're going where you see the traditions of people, and they're trying to drag you into that hole of tradition. Don't go with them. Avoid them. Like Timothy to say, from such, turn away. Turn away from them. Don't go that way. Don't go out there to throw breadcrumbs in the water. See, it goes back to what, what the scripture we start off with in Deuteronomy chapter 23. If anyone tries to cut you mm -hmm. in a manner that's not prescribed in your privy parts, yes, whether it's your penis or your testicles, and we're now talking spiritually speaking, uh -huh. okay, um, you're cut off. You can't yeah. go into the assembly of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. They have literally crushed your testicles or they've ruined your, your, your penis in a sense that where the semen, the seed of light that would come through that, it, it can't. The, it, it's not functional. The, 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 you left your first love. Uh, you right. traded your husband. Right. Right. <laughs> you right. left him. You left him. Yep. So you, you automatically cut off when you, you divorce. Yeah. 
That means nothing through that vehicle mm -hmm. can produce anything anymore. Yeah. No, nope, that no gate's more. closed. Yeah, it's yeah. done. You you cut it off because it off. you 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 went and picked up something but, else. You know the thing is this this <laughs> we as a people got to get through this superficial um, way of looking at scriptures. John, we can have both. I love that doctrine. No, what I, what I'm trying to get to is that as long as you're indulging in Talmud, mm -hmm. rabbinics, traditions of the elders. It's not going to let you go over here to this stuff. It, it, it It's going to cloud you. And I, I read some verse that talked about that. It clouds your thinking. I agree with you 100%. But in my fleshly mind, John, I love that doctrine because it'll let it's me. It's appealing. Yeah, it'll allow me to do whatever I want to do. As long as why I'm in your sight, I can appear right. to be like you. And you know, you know? what you know what else was, is good about it? I say good loosely. Mm -hmm. What's good is if everybody else in the congregation is doing it, mm -hmm. there's a spirit of camaraderie, closeness, friendship, uh, togetherness. You know, you can you can put all those things, unity. But it's a wrong kind of unity because I dare any of these people that be watching this thing. Uh -huh. If you decide to step out, and say, I'm not going to follow this Jewish tradition anymore. I'm not saying all Jewish tradition is bad. Right. I'm saying in regards to these spiritual matters, which, which where it really matters, where it crushes as, your as testicles. Give, yeah, giving you an identity. If you were to tell your fellow brothers and sisters, and I, I'm not telling you this in theory, because mm -hmm. it's happened to me. I've had wars with whole groups of people because I stepped out and said, I'm not going down the road you all got seduced into, and I became their worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Not that I wanted it that way. That's the way it happened. They will cut you off so fast, you're going to have a rude awakening realizing you were never really joined to them in the way that you thought in the first place. It was all a big delusion. It was self-delusion. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you say, I'm not doing these traditions anymore, they're going to cut you off. You're an outsider. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're going to find a different kind of unity because now it opens you up to a relationship with Yahshua that you could not have on that other system. And no man can cut you off. Not in that case. Well, he's joined. No man can separate. Right. All right. So we're going to go through the book of Galatians, chapter three, verses one through twenty nine. Mm -hmm. Think what I'm going to do in this one, because uh, there's, there's a lot of verses and I want to be able to not get through so many that we miss some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to cut it off right around verse 14 or so, and then we'll elaborate, and then we'll do the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So in verse 1, it says, O foolish, unintelligent, and sensual Galatians, who has bewitched, maligned, and false representations uh, you with should not obey the truth, which is the Torah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whose eyes Yahshua HaMashiach has clearly portrayed that was previously ordained among you as crucified? This accusation, only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit of Yahweh? And, and this is about producing the divine seed, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Getting back to this, because obviously he's talking to a people that lost mm -hmm. the divine seed, mm -hmm. or in the process of it, um, of Yahweh by works, as an act of your efforts of the law of Moses, or by the hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. Are you so foolish, unintelligent, and sensual of the senses? Having begun in the spirit of Yahweh, are you now being made perfect by means of fulfillment of your flesh to its completion to make it perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered with exp experiencing pain and vexation so many things in vain and without reason, if indeed it was in vain to the point of complete failure and without reason? Therefore, he who supplies with aid and nourishment the spirit of Yahweh to you and works with fervent miracles with power and strength among you, does he do it by the works as an act of efforts of the law of Moses or by the hearing of faith that is a moral conviction of truth? Just as Abraham believed by entrusting his spiritual well-being into Yahweh and it was accounted like taking inventory to him for righteousness, which is equity of character. Therefore, now know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Whoop. And the scripture foreseeing that Yahweh would justify as regard as innocent the Gentiles who are non-Jewish and who are pagan by faith, 
preached the gospel, the good news to Abraham beforehand, mm -hmm. saying, "In all you all nations, non-Jewish, who are pagan, shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith and are blessed by invoking a praise on with believing Abraham. For as many as are works as an act of effort of the law of Moses are under the curse by Im, 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 pre, pre, I'm sorry, impredicating an unannounced evil, for it is written, cursed, exorable, and wretched is everyone who does not continue, stay in the same place, and preserve in all things as a whole, which are written in the book, the scroll of the law of Moses, to do them. So clearly he's advocating you stay in it, mm -hmm. okay? But that no one is justified and rendered innocent by the law of Moses in the sight of Yahweh is evident, clearly manifest, or just who are innocent and holy shall live by faith. Yet the law of Moses is not in existence as to not of be of the source of faith, of moral conviction, but the man who does them shall live by them. Mm -hmm. The anointed one has redeemed and brought us to the, uh, bought us as a ransom, us from the curse of the imprecating and an announced evil of the law of Moses, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse, exorable, and wretched is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of fine speaking of adoration of Abraham might come upon as a resulting purpose of the Gentiles who are non-Jewish through Messiah Yahshua that we might receive the promise which is a divine promise of good of the spirit that is divine of Yahweh through faith. So we're going to pause right there and talk a little bit about that because some of the wording there I'm sure is going to be very confusing to some people. Mm -hmm. But you kind of touched on it before we even read this. But go ahead and uh, give your, your perspective. No, it... it, it it's simple to me, to me, the way I see it. You know, uh, uh, if I'm, if I'm, if I remember correctly, I think this chapter is talking about um, they telling the uh, non-Jewish believers that were coming in. Now these were supposed to be already Jewish believers that's mm -hmm. teaching them, right? And um, telling them they got to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. And Paul was saying. That ain't how you got saved. You already saved. Right. So what is this adding to you? Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. you can't add nothing to this uh, to make you any better. In the form of righteousness. Right. Yeah. It, it, to make you any righteous. Mm -hmm. I'll put it like that. And so he's telling you, uh, well, then, how did you come? Let me, let me explain. I, I taught you about Abraham. He went all the way back to Abraham now before Moses. And how was it? It was explained to Abraham. Abraham saw Yeshua days. You with me? Mm -hmm. And was taught what was going to happen. Maybe Abraham was thinking he was going to be there to explain it. You know, that it would happen faster. But it didn't happen during Abraham's t generation. Right. Right. It went on and on and on. And they still wouldn't allow Abraham promise to be manifested until Yeshua came. And now once Yeshua came, we preach that now the door is open. You coming in. It's always been a way for you to come in. One law for the stranger, one law for the homeborn. Mm -hmm. If he want to come in and keep your laws, then he would be one that was like born in the land. Right. Yeshua came in and kept it. And now he's keeping it through us. But the law that they're talking about was a law that showed you deserve a certain kind of punishment. Circumcision didn't show that. Right. I, I, you know, this is a, one of those subjects where I think a lot of people get very confused and I can understand why. And I don't fault anybody for being confused about it because there's a lot of back and forth right. in this dialogue. Mm -hmm. And one minute it seems like get rid of the law. Mm -hmm. And the next moment it seems like, well, the law is still there and you should do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, so let's, let's put this in, in perspective a bit. So as a New Testament believer who received Yahshua HaMashiach and you now have the Ruach, Mm -hmm. that is your righteousness mm -hmm. that is your foundation right right mm -hmm. now let's take two different people with that let's take one who's a jew and one who's a gentile right and the jew was keeping the torah 
as best he understood it. I'm not going to get into technicalities of it. Mm-hmm. Let's say he's keeping the Sabbath and dietary laws, you know, basic stuff. The Gentile was not. Mm-hmm. But Yahshua looks down on both of them, and he gives them their spirit to open up their mind so that they can receive him by faith. Mm-hmm. That same righteousness is imputed to both of those people equally. Mm-hmm. One might be dealt a measure of faith a little more than the other, but that's a whole other discussion. The point here is, is that in that moment, you cannot add anything to that righteousness. That's where you are justified. Mm-hmm. That's where you're set apart. That's where you're sanctified. And that's where he wants you to stay. And don't deviate from that concept and start adding other stuff into this. Okay? Now let's go back to the law and where that fits. So the Jew who was keeping the law was keeping it under the Old Testament dispensation. He was under a death penalty. Because his righteousness couldn't exceed the righteousness of the letter of the law of mm-hmm. Moses. Mm-hmm. And in that state, what it did do as the schoolmaster we brought out the last time, it led him to the Messiah mm-hmm. and he got Messiah now. Mm-hmm. So he good. He's real good because not only does he have the Messiah, but he ha- now has the Torah where the Messiah is going to say, I brought you up to this point. The schoolmaster brought you up to this point. Mm-hmm. But now I'm going to take you away from being under the schoolmaster, the teacher, and I'm going to make you the teacher. Mm-hmm. Because my Ruach living in you is now giving you a heart to learn how to keep this law in a way you couldn't do it before as a blood-born Jew who did not have the Ruach. Mm-hmm. Now you're really going to be set free. Mm-hmm. For the Gentile who wasn't keeping the law, he was dead according to the law too. Mm-hmm. Because he was disobedient, he didn't have a teacher that could bring him to the Messiah. He was out in the world. He's of the wild olive tree, unrestrained by nature, okay? Unregenerate. Mm -hmm. He's under the death sentence also, okay? But now he's got the Ruach. And now Yahweh's showing him for the first time, it's great that you believe in me, but now I'm going to start convicting your soul and your mind that what you used to do and thought was normal was okay, which was actually contrary to the law, Mm -hmm. you now can't get away with with me living inside you. We Mm -hmm. need to clean this thing up. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of say it like this with the law, where any human can understand this. So let's say in my house, my wife, and I'm going to use this because I'm guilty, so I'm a sinner in this way. My wife has a law which he doesn't really enforce, uh, that I, I should be taking the garbage out, right? Twice a week, should take the garbage out. And I, I forget all the time to do it. So I'm guilty of sin. I'm, I'm guilty. Whether I go into the lake of fire or not for that, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I hope I can repent of it <laughs> before mm-hmm. I get to that point. But if I, let's say I went and I took the garbage out twice a week and put it out front for the garbage man, Mm -hmm. I would be fulfilling the righteous requirement of the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm on good terms with my wife. But if if I really want to get good attention from my wife, where she pats me on the head and blesses me a little more than she normally does, she she blesses me a lot. I don't want to say she don't. But she'll bless me a little bit above and beyond all you can think or ask or imagine. Mm -hmm. That kind of a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. If I went around the house before I took the garbage out and I started vacuuming, I started lifting up the pillows and and vacuuming out all the the breadcrumbs and stuff that goes in there, popcorn, whatever, and, and moving the couches out of the way and cleaning all that up. And if I see a smudge on the wall, I get the 409, I start cleaning that up. And then when I'm done all that and filling the bag up, and then I bring it out. Which level of righteousness do you think is higher than the other one? They're both the same law. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is when you're going by the Old Testament dispensation of keeping the law, as a Jew supposedly would, if he wasn't following Talmud, right? He'd be fulfilling the letter of the law. And there's a level of righteousness in that because it's meant to preserve him. So that he can get to a place where eventually it leads him to Messiah if you don't have in the entanglement of Talmud and rabbinics mixed in with it, which is going to prevent him from seeing it. It's going to be very difficult. Mm-hmm. It would take a direct act from Yahshua 
to break that cycle of defeat in that person because mm -hmm. they can't do it on their own. But once he becomes a believing Jew and he starts saying, oh, I used to keep the Sabbath like this, but I see it's it, 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 this is the real spirit of the Sabbath. And he starts going above and beyond the letter of the law and keeping it in the spirit of the law even deeper than what he knew as a as a natural Jew. But now as a spiritual Jew, you think Yahshua is going to be more pleased with him in the second situation? Of course he is. So, again... The concept of Talmud, rabbinics, traditions of men in general, whether it's that or Christianity or any other religion that is contrary to the truth, mm -hmm. is designed to put you into a state of mind where you have to have your testicles crushed and you will not be able to receive the true spirit. And this is what Shaul was saying is that basically you've traded in for another husband. So you're a polygamist. Mm -hmm. And that's a spiritual polygamist mm -hmm. is what you are. Mm -hmm. So that's all you know all I kind of wanted to say about that part. Yeah, I just saw um and it's each time that I've read it, you know, that they're putting the works of the law over the faith. The faith, you know. Exactly. And, exactly. and, and though they said they, though these were people I believe who said they believed in Messiah but they didn't believe in Messiah for their righteousness. No. They believed in the work. Well, then, if you just believe in the works above all, that's what you're going to give more uh, attention, attention to. to. You right. know? And so, okay. That's now the you driving got to force. do them all now, yeah. and you don't need Messiah right. no more. But right. you just, with your mouth, saying, I honor him, but with your heart, it's you a Mary. Don't. It's a Mary syndrome. Yeah. So busy cleaning the house mm -hmm. that you're not sitting down to deal with the spiritual things. Exactly. And so... When he when he come and say that okay that law killed you, that law told you it was something else other than Yeshua that had to clean you. You see what I'm saying? That's exactly so now, the point. If you going back to that for your righteousness, you got to go back and get the other one to give you this momentarily right momentary uh, righteousness. Uh, but this righteousness in Yeshua in Yeshua is forever. It's permanent. You know, yeah. and nothing can replace it. And I see a teaching that was leading these people. And I was there. I'm telling you, I was there. Now, I'm, I, I, I guarantee you the person that's teaching will say, no, he wasn't teaching. But I was there, boy. Don't touch that. Don't go into a center house. If you go into a center house, you defiled. That's right. Yep. How was I going to get clean? If you're sure wasn't my my um and you know how you cleaning um, you know how that was true mm -hmm. by the evidence of destruction it left behind elaborate on that one for well me. what i'm saying is the person is saying oh no i'm not teaching that uh-huh well the evidence that you are teaching it is when i implement what you're saying it left a whole bunch of destruction behind yeah i, I can remember one one day we was coming out for the we take a like we call it portion time on like we might do here have a little lunch mm -hmm. period before we go back in and complete the rest of the Shabbat uh, and it was a, 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 a little restaurant next door to the temple and the kids couldn't get the key to work and so we were standing out there you know before we left and they asked me to see can I unlock it and I went over there and twisted it and, and to unlock it and he told me you sh you shouldn't have did that you're going to cause uh you breaking the sabbath you're going to cause mm -hmm. them to be in sin by doing that for them by allowing them to go in and work and I I, I, I couldn't see that but these are mm -hmm. the, the different things that was crushing my mind because I couldn't understand why would that take the righteousness of Yeshua away from me. It's right. sort of like the the, the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan. Each one of those priests believed in their mind that they'd have stopped and helped that Samaritan, that that beaten and battered man on the side of the road. It would have took away some form of righteousness away from them that they wouldn't have been able to worship Yahweh. And this is what I see in the teaching that they were still teaching in Galatians, Colossians, Corinthians, mm -hmm. all the same argument. And everywhere Paul went, he had to address the it, same issue. It was a common yeah. um, enticement mm -hmm. that 
is preve- prevalent today as well. And we can fall into it. Oh, it's yeah. so easy to but fall you, into it. It's, not, it's, it's hard to do it if you mm-hmm. educate yourself. You're right. And ask Yahweh to show you. He doesn't want you to be ignorant. Ask him to show you. Experience. You know, experience. It, what we're talking You're about. You're going to need it. Mm-hmm. Things are getting tougher and tougher out there. You've been there. I've been there. Yeah. You probably ain't did the same things coming out the block that I was doing, but it probably was something else different that you were believing back then well, that you found out later on. Can't do it. That you that it wasn't even necessary. No, it wasn't necessary. It was, it was a burden. Right. Okay, so picking up in verse 15, we'll finish the rest of this chapter. Mm-hmm. Brethren, I speak in a systematic discourse in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant and contract, yet if it, if, if it is confirmed, mm-hmm. which makes it authoritative, no one annuls to the point of neutralizing or adds a supplement to it. This is mm-hmm. what we've been saying. Mm-hmm. Now, Ab- to Abraham and his seed, which is Joshua, because it's large right. S, right. Uh, were the promises, which is a divine promise of good made. He does not say, and to seeds, which is dealing with humans, Mm -hmm. as something sown by sperm, Mm -hmm. as of many, but as of one. And to your seed, as something sown by sperm, who is the anointed one. And this I say in a systematic discourse, that the law, which is an advisory um, covenant will, which was 430 years later, cannot annul, invalidate the covenant that was confirmed before by ratification by Yahweh in the anointed one, Mm -hmm. that it should make the promise, which is a divine promise of good, of no effect, to render entirely useless. Mm -hmm. For it is is the inheritance, which is an airship of possession. So if the inheritance, which is an airship of possession, is of the law of Moses, it is no longer a promise which is a divine promise of good. But Yahweh gave as a favor and a grant of kindness as a pardon of it to Abraham by promise, which is a divine promise of good. What purpose then does the law of Moses serve? It was added and placed additionally to increase because of transgressions and violations of it. Till the seed, Yahshua, Mm -hmm. as something sown by sperm should come, to whom the promise was made as a requirement to do this, it was appointed and arranged as a command through the angels by the hand of a mediator who reconciles. Now a mediator who reconciles does not mediate for one only, but Yahweh is one. Is the law of Moses then against the promise, which is a divine promise of good of Yahweh? Certainly not, with absolute denial of such a thing. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. But the scripture has confined and closed up all under as to be placed beneath sin that is an offense. That the promise, which is divine promise of good, by faith in Yahshua Messiah might be given to those who believe by entrusting his spiritual well-being into. But before faith came as to mount a guard for protection under as to be placed beneath the guard of the law, enclosed in for the faith which would afterward be revealed as removing off a lid. Therefore the law of Moses was our tutor, whose office was to take us as school ch- children to school to bring us to a place in the anointed one that we might be justified and rendered innocent by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under as to be placed beneath a tutor who ha- whose office was to take us as children to school. For, no doubt, you are all sons and a, 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 a son of Elohim through faith in Messiah Yahshua. For as many as you were baptized into by reaching into the point of entrance into the Anointed One have put on as sinking into a garment that arrays you in the Anointing. There is neither, absolutely no Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you're all one in the anointed one, Yahshua. And if you are Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed as something sown by sperm and heirs a share in a lot of being pardoned according to the promise, which is a divine promise of good. 
Baruchashem. Praise him. It I don't know. I just I'm telling you, it's just so clear to me. But I like you say, I can see the confusion in it. Uh, because I was confused when they used to oppose me with those uh this scriptures, you know. But I just see that nothing can replace Yeshua. Mm -hmm. The law was there to show you that it was something coming to show you mercy. It's a promise and it's a seed. It's a sperm that's going to make a seed. It ain't going to be no physical sperm. It's a spiritual sperm that we're going to come and show mercy. Right. When the law was saying, okay, under the law, I can kill you for that. Under the law, you could be cut off from that. But here comes somebody to render you mercy that you don't die for that offense. But don't go back and do the offense anymore. Right. So it's not about doing away or not keeping the law. It's about using the law as your instrument, your vehicle to mercy. Mm -hmm. And if you if you can't see it today, then you don't you really is hindering yourself from coming and receive mercy. You know, uh, uh, the Bible talks about the judgment seat of mercy. I come boldly before your throne of grace, your throne of mercy. Well, if you don't have the vehicle to get you to the throne, what's going to give you the authority to go right there? Even in, in biblical times, the queen couldn't even go to the king mm -hmm. unless he held up some instrument or vehicle to say, come on in through this vehicle right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same way today. We cannot get to Yeshua except, as Paul, we talked about the last time, I did not know sin except the law said. Okay, so good point. Mm -hmm. Because I'm listening to you and I'm thinking to myself, what if there was no Torah mm -hmm. and Yahshua just came and he called people and he gave them the spirit? It would have been very diffic diff difficult for the Jews or mm -hmm. the rabbis to hijack the faith. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about a vehicle. See, for the Jews and the rabbis and the Sanhedrin and all these guys, the Torah was actually that vehicle. Mm -hmm. Because what did they do? They hijacked the vehicle. And when they got that vehicle, they respray painted it different colors. They put graffiti on it. They put Mexican tassels inside it, leather seats. They did all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So now it kind of looks the same, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And then they come and they try to present that new vehicle to you mm -hmm. as a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is prettier. This is better. It's got more bells and whistles on it. It's louder. It's got neon lights on it. LED lights lighting up the ground when you drive at night. Ain't that cool? And we fall for it. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's a vehicle that's stolen. So you get in that car, you start driving that car, and you see the blue lights in the, in the background, and you pull over, and they find out it's a stolen car. Mm-hmm. And it happens to belong to somebody who's very prominent in the society. And they're going to take out their retribution on you. And they're going to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. Man, you got some consequences, legal problems that you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. It's like you say, it's crushing. It's crushing. It's crushing because you can't rightly divide what's true in it. Can't. And so, for me, and I'll tell you, I've been down this journey. So, I'm talking from experience you know how this thing can crush you well what can i do well this is a law that only allows you to punish mm -hmm. because it right, brings punishment right, right 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 you know and so it's so easy to say well if sickness fall on me well that's my punishment right where was your deliverance where was your mercy where was your forgiveness Where's your healing? If you will never be able to receive healing, if all you see is your punishment, because there's no healing if I'm going to look at this law in that perspective, through that channel. It's a outward. Your healing yeah. comes when you renounce mm -hmm. the very dogmas, philosophies of men that crush your testicles. He said it's wise. 
in your translation. It's wise. It comes from a wise place. Yeah, because they like to seek yeah. wise philosophies. Mm -hmm. and it's Wisdom sound. that is so tricky mm -hmm. that these unsuspecting Gentiles would never understand what we're doing to them. And not even the children can understand it. So you know it's going to mess us up. But I heard the voice. But it was a strange voice, sure. you know? It's so strange to me that no way it can be telling me the truth based on what I'm seeing. No way I could be a part of this mm -hmm. based on what I'm seeing because this is not for me. I got a freedom that I can live on and still have what you say you got, Yahweh, and don't have to do the thing that you require to do. I, had a, I got a friend, he's moved over to California now, and... He used to live over in Inverary. You know, that's a Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And every Sabbath, he would tell me he would go over there and turn on the microwave for them and turn the light on for them. And he thought he was doing a real good deed. Yeah. And I asked him a question. I said, let me ask you something. You think you're doing something good, don't you, and honorable? He said, I sure do. He said, it makes me feel good when I do that. <laughs> and I said, well, then let me ask you this question. If they're going to get punished for doing it, and you say you serve the same one they're doing, what, what's going to stop him from punishing you? If it's all right for, if they're going to get sent to hell for doing it, right? Hmm? and you're not, and, but you believe he the same one that's going to punish them, well, you you hurting them by having it on because they ain't supposed to have it on, period. You're telling them not to have it on. Right. Yeah. And he's, it, it started him because he wasn't thinking like that. No. I said, you actually hurting them. That's right. It's all about if perspective. If they're not supposed to have it on. I say, but they're saying to everybody else out there that they don't turn them on. Technically, they turning them on through you. So you're hurting them. So they're making him sin. Right. But it's their sin because they're actually they got blood on working their hands. a right. servant Absolutely. on the Shabbat. There you go. An unpaid you, servant. You understand what yeah. I'm saying. A slave. How experience teaches you of the trickery that's being used to make the law of none effect through traditions. Mm hmm I, I don't know if y'all with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and the law is good. Nothing bad about it. If you use it lawfully. But it can't, it can't it's not your salvation. It's no. not Yeshua. No. It can't do what Yeshua can do for you. But you can't get to Yeshua without it. That's right. They both are one. That's right. He is the law he of the spirit. The you can't get rid of him. You get rid of the law, you get rid of him. It, it, it took experience to yeah, bring me time. here. You, know, you see, you know? the, the thing, what you're touching on, and, and this is what I want to say to people, is are you malleable? Mm -hmm. Are you malleable? Malleable means can you be molded and shaped? And in this context, are you being molded and shaped by men mm -hmm. and their traditions? Mm -hmm. Or are you being molded and shaped by Yahweh? There is your paradigm. You choose. Yes. You continue the foolishness of allowing these guys to mold and shape you into whatever they want to produce in you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have crushed seed. If you're tired of it, if you're frustrated with it, if you had enough of it, or if you didn't understand it until now, you now understand it. The burden is now on you mm -hmm. to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Walk away from it. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be easy because mm -hmm. everybody's going to be against you. Mm -hmm. But you and I have done paid that price many times. So yes. I, I take it as a badge of honor. I don't take it as a depressing thing. It, it actually confirms to me that I'm walking in the right way. Mm -hmm. Am I walking perfect? No, I'm not walking perfect. Mm -hmm. My wife can testify to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm trying to allow the rock and I'm trying to become malleable moldable by messiah mm -hmm. and it takes time it's not something that happens overnight mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so let's move on i'm going to read now through half of galatians we'll stop and then we'll read the last half and then we're going to conclude okay so in here it's about accepting the covenant of hagar this is a subject that almost nobody talks about mm -hmm. i don't think too many people really probably quite understand it um and there's a lot to it i'll, I'll get into some of it uh but we're going to read the scripture 
Uh, but it's for me, it's more about a concept because this is really a discussion all by itself. But we're just going to go through this and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So in verse one, now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, as an infinite and immature, does not differ or is more excellent at all from a slave. Though he is master, that has the supreme authority of all. But is under beneath guardians of the full power of domestic manager and stewards as an overseer until the time appointed as a, a designated day by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, as an infant and immature, were in the past in bondage as a servant under an inferior position of the elements that is an orderly arrangement like the military rank when they walk of the world. So in other words, you're conforming to the world standards. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. That's what it's getting across. As an orderly arrangement. And there is an order to it. But when the fullness of the time had come, Yahweh sent on a mission forth his son, born of a woman, born to come into being under, beneath in obedience to the law of Moses. So even Yahshua was under the law. Mm -hmm. Born in what they call the New born Testament. Born into being under the law. To redeem for an improved opportunity those Jews who are under the law that we might receive in full the adoption as sons. And because you are presently sons, Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into by entering your hearts through your mind and feelings. There, that's what we've been talking about. Where's the filter up here? Do you have one? Yes, mm -hmm. you do. The question is, what kind of filter you got? Is it dirty? Does it need to be changed? Yes, it probably does. Through your minds and feelings, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave in subserviency to the philosophies of men. You've been set free, which is what we're telling you. But a son, and if a son, then an heir of Yahweh through Messiah. But then, indeed, you did not know Yahweh. You served as a slave those by which nature are not Elohims. But now, after you have known through understanding Yahweh, or rather are known by Yahweh, how is it that you have you turn by reverting back again to the weak that is impotent and without strength, the beggarly poor person from stress elements, principles to which you desire as a preference again to be in bondage as a slave of service? You observe by watching days and months and seasons and years. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid with alarming reverence for you, lest I have labored to the point of fatigue for you in vain that leads to failure. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured through unjustness uh, to me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. And my tri tri trial of adversity, which is in my flesh, did not despise or reject or despise, but you, deceived, you received me as an angel of Yahweh, even as Messiah Yahshua. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I fear you witnessed that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. So we'll stop, pause right there and elaborate a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's just a, it's just a continuation of this letter. Right. You know, expounding on the same thing. He's just coming at it from different different perspectives to try to reach them. You know, it's like we sitting here and we talking. And we're saying, oh, he just spoke to me again. Here's another analogy. Here's another way I see, I see it. You know, um, there's no other name besides the name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And there's no other way. He is the way, the truth and the light. And yet, we as human, we always think it's something more that we can put on to to do and and to their fault out there they they have the right uh perspective but to their fault they they uh deliver it to me in in a in a uh weakening manner you know when they say oh there's nothing else you need to do he did it all oh you need to believe you know that he did it all but you also need to believe that you still have to condemn you in a, in a certain manner of life you know, if if I taught you, Paul is saying, if I taught you this way, 
you know, well then who's teaching you this way? Mm -hmm. Where did you get this from? Because I didn't teach you that and you wasn't like this when I left. I've so experienced a lot of that one. Why, yeah. why am I finding a different person now? You know, and, and with these Galatians, it's like so many other people and we all can say we read the scriptures do we understand really that all of us are subject to the same things somebody else coming in and teaching you a better way uh how many people you know to this day i found out that we don't have to keep the sabbath no more oh, well, where did you go at to get that hundreds and hundreds <laughs> where yeah. who did you go to right. because you definitely didn't go to the word you with me mm -hmm. And, and Moses never talked against keeping the commandments. No. And he never talked against uh, receiving Yeshua. He was telling you, one going to come after me. Him, I want you to hear in all things. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you a piece of it right now. Right. But he's going to bring all of it together. And you hear him in everything. He's not going to take this part away. He's right. going to put it all together. That's that's where i'm at so yeah far. no no i got you you know this particular verse here this last one is interesting because mm -hmm. there seems to be a shift in his language he says what then was the blessing you enjoyed mm -hmm. so what he's signifying here to me is that when they were walking the way they should have they enjoyed a blessing mm -hmm. for i bear you witness that if possible you would have you would have mm -hmm. not presently but you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Mm -hmm. Whatever he would have asked them to do. But they're they now currently in a state where he's saying that has changed. Your attitude towards me has changed. And I'm, and, and as we read earlier up, he was saying, I want you to bear with me for a while in my folly. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to ridicule you mm -hmm. and, and humor you with the ridicule, but you need to be told. And that's kind of what we're doing here for those that need to wake up is that, Sometimes we ridicule, sometimes we criticize, but it's not for condemnation. Uh, I'm sure you just got to wake up. You got to understand what's really going on here. This is like a matrix world that we're living in. I'm sure you have people now, you, you know, uh, uh, well, probably not presently with you right now, but we're with you uh, a while and would come and say, John, I know Yahweh spoke to you because... Um, uh, he told me to come here when I heard your message. He told me to oh. come here and listen to you. And now, boom, they're they gone. gone another way. They yeah. don't want to hear nothing you got to say now. This is the kind of people he came back right. to meet. And, and there's going to be listening some, to somebody there's else. There's going to be some people who are watching this mm -hmm. who are going to hear this and they're going to be cut to the heart. Mm -hmm. And three minutes after they leave this the, the video that they're watching, they're going to revert back to the old way again. Mm -hmm. If that's just the nature of how it works. So let's move on. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. I have therefore become your enemy to be hated. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So now it changed. Yeah. Because I tell you the truth, a proper doctrine. They zealously with warm feelings court you, mm -hmm. but of no good. They don't mean you no Yes. Good. They want to exclude by shutting you out mm -hmm. that you may be zealous with warm feelings for them. Mm -hmm. So they want to get them over on their side, hit their side. But... It is good, morally valuable, to be zealous and a good things always. And not only when I am present with you, mm -hmm. my little children, for whom I labor and felt the pains and birth again until Messiah is formed as adjusting your inward parts in you. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is. It's a progression. We're progressing along the way until he is fully formed in you. Mm -hmm. Until then, the shadow pictures are still there. Mm-hmm. Because once he's fully formed in you, you ain't got a shadow no more. Mm -mm. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone. For I have doubts that there is no way out for and about you. Mm -mm. Tell me, you who desire rather to be under beneath the law of Moses with Talmud mixed with it. Do you not hear with understanding the law of Moses? So he's got a con he's got a, a, a converse here going on. Mm -hmm. And that is on one hand, you want to hear the law of Moses mixed with Talmud, which is what this subject is about. Mm -hmm. And he's saying inside of that, don't you hear what Moses is saying? Mm -hmm. 
In other words, don't you know how to discard the Talmudic part and listen to what Moses is saying? Mm -hmm. And But Moses is clouded because of the Talmud mixed in it. Mm -hmm. It's that hijacked car again. Mm -hmm. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman who is unrestrained to go at pleasure. But he who was of the bondwoman which is a female slave, was born according pertaining to touch, touching, to the flesh, and he of the free, free woman whose promise is divine assurance, which things are symbolic in the opposite sense. Mm -hmm. So we got a contrast going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, two opposing ideas. For these, for these are two covenants or contracts, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage of ceremonial slavery, which is Hagar, the concubine of Abraham, not the Abrahamic covenant. She was not the legitimate wife. Right. And she produced a seed that didn't get the birthright, mm -hmm. didn't get the blessings that Israel was going to get and mm -hmm. was designed to get. Mm -hmm. That's when that seed got crushed. Mm -hmm. See, you could say in a moment when Abraham... Uh, came into her and conceived the son in a certain sense, his testicles got crushed in that moment mm -hmm. because he got a substitute son, which was not the one of the promise. Mm -hmm. So that son could not produce what the real son of promise was supposed to produce. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I don't want to say he made a mistake. But what I want to say is that seed that came out to produce that child could not do what the, uh, the original one is going to do. Yeah. That's the point. Mm -hmm. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, which was called Ag Agar in their day. So a lot of people don't realize that, but 500 years before Moses ascended to the mountain at Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. that sound, same mountain was called Mount Agar mm -hmm. when Abraham was around. Mm -hmm. And that's when that other covenant was cut at that time. Mm -hmm. It's the same mountain and corresponds and answers to Jerusalem. OK, which now is and is in bondage as a voluntary slave with her children. That's why this revelation series that I did, mm -hmm. I show that Jerusalem is Babylon the Great. And that Sanhedrin Judaism is the great whore. Mm -hmm. It started out this way and that's the way it's going to conclude. But the Jerusalem above is free which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, stiff, stiff and unnatural and sterile, you who do not bear, and bring forth seed or travail and pain. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. Speaking of Rachel. Mm -hmm. For the desolate, lonesome is a solitary desolate wilderness, as Hagar was, has many more children than she who has a husband. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise, divine insurance. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bond woman, which is a female slave and her son, for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free, unrestrained to go at pleasure. So now we have the closing comments. Mm -hmm. Whatever feedback you want to give on that. Well, praise Yahweh. This was exactly what we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. it, it was. It's deep. It's very deep. It's deep. And maybe for us, we know it's deep, but it seems so like common it, it, you know elementary well when you live this way mm -hmm. with this understanding uh for as long many years as we have and you see the results of those who follow like this versus those who get the consequences of following like with talmud or rabbinics and things or even christian because uh, they're all covenant of hagar at the end of the day mm -hmm. after a while you just can't deny what you're seeing all these things leave clues. Evidence leaves clues. 
And if you consistently see the negative results, then you have to conclude this this is correct. This is truth. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be my point on that. Yes. And just closing with it, as I see my journey, it's just walking by faith. And everything that we've been talking is the promise of Abraham, how he walked by faith you know and how he's seen his promises and it's it's if anybody out there just like i was and coming through the journey not knowing where i was going to end up but just following this voice and it's believing that that was the voice because it, it, every time i open up the word every time he gave me a vision he would be showing me and i would be hearing this voice and it would be exactly where I'm going, but it didn't look like where I was supposed to be. I had one, one, one um, dream when I was in prison. And it was like several rooms. It was a bunch of rooms, you know, maybe about six of them. And each room, people were dressed the same way. They had the, the uh, sea seats. Uh, they had different hats and different locks around their head. And each one of them were dressed alike. But I would make it from one room and I would go to the next and I'm seeking something. You know, hmm. what I'm hearing now, it looks like the place I should be, but they're not saying what I've been told. You know, they're not saying what I've been taught. And this is what Paul is teaching here, you know, in Galatians, who giving you this? I didn't teach this. I didn't teach this is where this come from. And I got to one room and they were blacks, but they were dressed in the same attire. And mm. I'm like, oh, this got to be the place I'm supposed to be right there because I'm feeling at home. They the same. And mm. all the places I ever been as a sinner now in the churches were all black churches, you know. Well, mm. maybe in the army they was mixed. But most part out here, they were all black, you know? And so, well, this got to be the place. But what they were saying, now this is not the one. And I kept going, I kept going until I made it outside. Hmm. There's no more rooms now. I'm outside and I'm standing around. And I still have not found my place. Who's wandering out there searching for their place? Are, is your mind and your heart being crushed? Are the testicles of your mind and heart being crushed that you won't stop like Abraham did and wait on the promise? Abraham made many choices, yeah, but yeah. it didn't make the promise of none effect. Right. Yeshua has promised to never leave or forsake us. He's going to bring us to the Father, but mm. we got to wait on him. How many of us out there still moving and not waiting on the promise how we how he's going to find you when he returns that's that's my closing and I, i'm i'm just praying that my experience john experience will help you hold on a little while longer and wait and just start start just looking at what's being told to you putting a screen up uh, you know, the word of Yahweh is like like a sifter. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, the, in the old days when I was a little kid, they had a little thing called a mm -hmm. sistrum. Mm -hmm. You know, and you pull that flower in there because it had a lot of trash in it. Mm -hmm. And you had to sift through it so that the trash. This is all we doing right here. If we, we using this word and it's like a sistrum today. We just sifting it out that nothing but the pure word of Yahweh come out right now. Mm -hmm. And that you can gather from it and get all the trash out. Get all the trash out of your the testicles of your mind and your heart right now and let the pure undulterated word of Yahweh penetrate. Amen. Um, hmm. There's a lot I would like to say, but we, I don't want to belabor this too long. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, is that people have been hijacked mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. they I considered myself fortunate in a certain way because when I was first called out of the world on my deathbed and I was miraculously healed um, 
I was brought straight into the foundations of the faith the correct way. Mm -hmm. I was brought up a Catholic. I didn't really believe in it. But when I was brought into this faith, I was brought directly right in. And I learned the correct foundation from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I feel really bad. I really do. For those of you out there that have were brought in in different kind of ways. And you got a lot of scarring going on up there. You got a lot of beliefs that are erroneous up there that you really need to get rid of. You need to come to grips with them. Because they're strongholds. They're spiritual strongholds. I'm not saying you're demonically possessed. What I'm saying is, and there may be some that are, but what I am saying is that you have spiritual strongholds. And one of the strongest strongholds that you can possibly have is erroneous beliefs. And when you examine all these scriptures pretty much that we've been going through here today, Shaul was confronting them about their beliefs. Mm -hmm. how they got to be the way that they were. And like Anthony said, if you don't guard this thing up here and get all that trash out of your testicles of your mind, mm -hmm. that seed's going to be mixed with a lot of other stuff and you're going to get a hybrid. And that hybrid in no way, shape, or form is ever going to be blessed. It's only going to be a curse. I don't know about you guys out there, but for me, I'm getting up in age. I've done a lot of stupid things over the years. I've done a lot of things that I thought was the right way, but I knew it wasn't the right way. I thought I was going to go do it and make it happen anyway. I'm tired of going down those roads. Mm -hmm. I want an easier road now. Yes. I want the straight and narrow path. Yes. As it says in Matthew. For broad is the way that leads to destruction, mm -hmm. and there are many that go in by it. But narrow is the path that leads to life. Yes. And there are few that find it. Are you one of the ones that's going to find it? Yes. The only way you're going to do that is get your testicles uncrushed. And with that, we thank you for joining us for Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions. Until we see you next time with another subject, may Yahweh bless you and Yahshua be in your lives working out these issues. So shalom and peace. Amen.